Spoiler talk. Never gonna get this right. Me, Hente, what's up? That guy, Ralph, third favorite YouTuber. Um, I got bit by a spider the other day, and I'm waiting for my Spider-Man powers to kick in. Still nothing. I'm trying to... I was hoping, like, Maguire effect, where I didn't have to make anything, so I don't think I'm that smart to create my own web shooters. So I'm hoping that I get, like, this little weird white cum on my wrist or whatever the hell that thing is, and just start getting it back. I don't, I don't know, man. But if you don't use it, does it, like, build up and explode in your arm? That would make a lot of sense. Like, think about it. Like, if it's sitting here, right, and I don't use it, I don't become Spider-Man, and it's just, like, built into a big, massive thing of web until it explodes. It's like blue ball for the wrist. And I'm getting off track. Um, this is a, a spoiler review for Far From Home. I'm going to do things a little different. For spoilers, I normally do my grading system uh, for, like, visuals and the flow, story, characters. I'm going to skip all that this time. I'm just going to try something different. Still touch base on the same things I always talk about, but not give a great system. Just give you likes, dislikes, and just keep it general, right? So the hardest, the easiest part about doing the whole grading system, I will say, is that when you finally give a score, it's easier to pinpoint it because doing the score is pretty much lands you exactly where you need to be. So I'm probably going to do like star grading like I did in a lot of my older videos. But I want you guys' opinions at the end of the video of what you think of this. So, Far From Home, I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was a great time. And I feel like the MCU has a good idea on how to make these characters enjoyable to a lot of people. Right? They change a lot of stuff from the comics. We all knew this. But Tom Holland's Spider-Man is very likable. And watching him was a great experience. I feel like he carried the movie in a lot of scenes. And the cast around him was actually pretty good, too. A lot of people complained about MJ, uh, Zendaya, uh, Michelle, instead of Mary Jane. And they were complaining how they made a white ginger into a black girl and you know, that whole typical stuff. That's everybody's always arguing about. But the thing that people need to understand is Michelle and MJ uh, and Mary Jane are different people. They're not the same what you're used to. And they made her very, like, gloomy. Some people like it, some people don't. But I feel like MJ in that universe fits better for Peter Parker and how the way they built him up. They did sound like an MJ in, in Homecoming with that girl. Damn, I forgot her name. Um, and she was okay, but it didn't really mesh well. But I feel like MJ fits better for um, Tom Holland's Peter Parker. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Mysterio. Great character. Mysterio's always been cool. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the comics or familiar with the cartoons, Mysterio's always been a master of illusion. So we all knew he was going to be BSing. The only one thing I hope that he told the truth about when I seen the trailer was multiverse. Uh, the idea of multiverse just like excites me. It gets my nipples hard every time I hear about it. And that's what I was really hoping for. That was my only downfall Mysterio. That he lied about that. But... He was still a great character to watch. And Mysterio being how they wrote him in, they did similar to uh, Vulture, where Stark did some shit, fucked up, and now Spider-Man has paid a consequence. And Mysterio happens to be like a Vulture, where he was a product of what Tony Stark did. I thought it was really cool how they incorporated him with the whole uh, memory thing and the illusions. I thought that was really interesting and cool but it kind of gets annoying sometimes to see how much tony stark plays a part in spider-man spider-man's his own character and i feel like even him making the suit was kind of lame for peter parker and spider-man's sake uh it kind of like dumbs him down spider-man's one of the smartest people in the marvel universe and you don't really get to see it that's my main issue with it but uh the biggest thing was actually nick fury the fact that Mysterio could pull all this off and not even get a iota of who the hell he really is shows Nick Fury is lacking. Now, that plays in part with the end credit scene when you find out it was actually uh, Talos who was playing Nick Fury. Then it all makes sense. Like, ah, uh, you can see how he messed up. But I felt like that was very, very weak, to be completely honest with you. That was one thing I didn't like. I want to hit what I didn't like. Um, 
first of all, Nick Fury is always on his P's and Q's. He doesn't trust anybody. But you go back and thinking, if he's been on vacation, how long he's been on vacation for. Mind you, we haven't seen Nick Fury in a lot of films after Age of Ultron. I think we've seen him again in Infinity War, and that was it. But it makes you wonder, like, was that Talos the whole time? And if that's so, that kind of changes your perspective on a lot of things. My issue with that is, um, it's lazy. Kind of like, well, how will we incorporate Mysterio being in S.H.I.E.L.D.? They made the film and thought it was a good idea until they realized, would Nick Fury do this? And he went back and let's, let's put it where it's Talos. But the personality-wise, it all makes sense because he was more jokey, which I enjoyed the hell out of because Sam Jackson, Sam Jackson, he's cool. And that was very enjoyable to watch. But when you think about the overall scheme of what Nick Fury is in MCU and just in comics and just in general, from what you know, it just doesn't make sense. That was the main thing I had a problem with. But Mysterio as a character, he had this demeanor where you hated him and you loved him all at the same time. Like the scene where you first find out he's evil, he gives like this grand speech and gives everybody credit and he's just like, his charisma is just like off the charts. Then he's uh, talking to Spider-Man towards the end and you can tell he's still being a dick, but you can you still like him. That's the sad part. You know what I mean? And you can tell that he really liked Spider-Man, but he was like, you know, things gotta happen. It is what it is. And I think that was very interesting as well. Mysterio character, period. As far as how they did the dusting thing, um, they called it a blip, bleeped, blip, whatever. I still can't get this shit right. But it was, it was funny how they incorporate and they explained like, well, technically, um, I had to redo, they, people had to redo classes and start over, even though they probably finished it, but since they bleeped in the middle of a school year. Um, also how the one reporter was saying that his little brother's now his older brother, which was super weird. Um, I thought that was pretty funny because then it's like, that's the same confusion that he has, the same confusion that a lot of us fans had about the whole uh, scene, home, Far From Home coming up. And then uh, the one kid who's like cock blocking Peter Parker, the kid was a dick. I was like hoping like, yo, just, you want to see the little drone, like, yo, get him out, Bang, pop, you know, but it, it messed up the whole trip. And, <laughs> and um, how they incorporated it, right? Like, so you pretty much blip back where you started. And it was funny when seeing the, the marching band with the basketball team, and that, that was funny as hell. But... The issue is you start thinking about like those memes or the people are on the airplanes. And so they blip back being on the airplane and they're like falling. So that's where things kind of get a little messy. Can you imagine how many people actually die just from being in the wrong place on the blip? <sighs> and I lost a lot of casualties. So you figure you still lost a good majority of mankind or uh, universe just off of that theory that they're blip back to wherever they was. You know, doing the same exact thing because the March Band was still playing the music, blipped, and then kept playing. So, go to show you. But overall, I thought it was a fun movie. I actually liked it a lot more than Spider Man, not than the original Spider Man. Uh, Spider Man 2, I thought was the best live action Spider Man, but I like Far From Home more. Uh, mainly because of Mysterio. I'm be completely honest with you. Uh, I enjoy Mysterio more as a character than I do Doc Ock. And Jake Gyllenhaal can play anything. And that's what made me love the film even more. And also Tom Holland's Spider-Man to me has a slight edge over Garfield and Maguire. And I think that's why I enjoyed Far From Home more than Spider-Man 2. But both films were a success. I still think, if I'm going to be honest, Spider-Verse was the best Spider-Man movie, period. But since it's not live action, I am going to try to separate it and be as unbiased as possible. Because I'm not biased at all. Um, I loved... I liked Homecoming, but I loved Far From Home. It was just a great time, and I liked it. You know what I mean? It, it was fun. It was cool, and it felt like a Spider-Man film. Now that I got all the film stuff out of the way, the mid credit scene, oh my God, mind blown. Best mid credit scene I've seen in an MCU film, probably in the movie in general, but the mid credit scene was ridiculous. Um, you see him uh, swinging with MJ, and when he finally, you know, gets to where he has to go, J. Joma Jameson comes out. It's J.K. Simmons. Oh, my God. The OG J. Jonah Jameson. Oh, my God. 
fantastic seeing him. I, I love that character, first of all. I love that actor. The character, the actor, both phenomenal. But you put them both together, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. I was speechless watching that. Then when uh, Mysterio senses he alters the footage of Spider-Man and messes with it, that's crazy. And that's the crazy part about it. He actually reveals who Spider-Man was. Now, my issue with that is you can easily clean that up. You know what I mean? He was a bad guy. You know, you should, I don't know, make tries into exposing who he was. The next issue is a lot of people don't know if he's dead or not. Um, which leads me to a good point. I don't know if he's dead either. Somebody in the comment section, let me uh, let me know if he's dead or not. But I hope he's not because I would love to see uh, the Sinister Six come in. And Mysterio was a great 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 villain to watch so i would love to see more of mysterio you know he doesn't get a lot of credit but he's actually a very likable spider-man villain spider-man role gallery has a lot of great potential a lot of great characters besides green goblin and venom which are probably the two most popular ones that spider-man has but they have he has a lot it's a lot a lot a lot and i want to see craven come into the spider-man film Oh, I love Craven. I think he's he's cool as hell. And can you imagine seeing that on screen? If they do it right, it'd be perfect. But tell me what you guys thought of Far From Home. Uh, did you like it? Was it your favorite Spider-Man film? If not, what was your favorite Spider-Man film? Also, be sure to check out the spoiler free. Hold for a second. And some other videos that I'm going to uh, put in the description down below. All right? What's up, people? I know... Uh, it's been a very different spoiler talk that I normally do, but thank you for watching it. If you can, just check out some other videos below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel where I do post up weekly and hopefully two times a week if I can. But check me out. You won't be sorry. Thank you again.